What does a healthy stream look like? Can you tell just by looking at it? As county biologists, we want to know, can a stream support a well-functioning, balanced biological community? So one important way that we monitor stream health is by looking at the condition of the benthic macroinvertebrate community. Benthic macroinvertebrates are tiny animals that dwell on the stream bottom. They're so small that they can be easily overlooked by the untrained eye. These animals are only present under the right habitat conditions. If there's excessive sediment, pollution, or other environmental stressors, these animals will simply not survive. And if the benthic population is gone, the larger animals, like fish, that rely on them for food will not survive either. Benthics are an integral part of the stream ecosystem and its food web. So when searching for the best stream habitat, I'm going to select a riffle where the water breaks over the rocks creates a lot of oxygen for those stream organisms to use. I place my net firmly on the bottom of the stream, downstream from where I would like to sample, so that anything I disturb, organisms and sediment will travel into my net. I begin by removing large rocks, checking each carefully for organisms that are clinging to those rocks. As I closely inspect each rock, I will find organisms clinging. Here, very difficult to see, are two little stone cases. So I will take the time to pick each one off over the net so that they flow into the net. After I've moved all the large rocks, I'll begin to disturb the stream bottom with my fingers, or we can use a hand rake to do the same thing. So I'm gonna move the rocks and dislodge and disturb any animals that are hiding between them. And I may not be able to see them right now, but because my net is downstream, they'll be flowing in and we'll be able to have a look at them later and see what's there. The final step in order to get all the organisms into my sample and into the net is to dislodge the final portions with my feet. So I'll go in and use a shuffling motion. And it can be good exercise. You can really get into it as long as you're not crushing the organisms. But you can give it a wiggle, work your waist out. <laughs> and once I feel that I've dislodged everything, I wait until the water has, is flowing clear through my sampling net and all the organisms in my entire sample are in the net. So after I've collected my sample, I'll transfer it into a bucket with a sieve at the bottom to begin processing it to get it ready for the lab. I'll take the time to remove any large rocks, leaves, and sticks, as well as make sure that I catch every organism and I don't actually discard anything. I'm really excited to see the animals that are in here. They tell us a lot about this stream's condition. The sample we collected has a variety of benthics. Some can tolerate pollution, and others are very sensitive and won't survive in polluted water. This tells me something important about the water quality here. When I find sensitive species, I can infer that the water quality is good enough for them to survive. Their presence indicates a healthy stream system. These animals in here, these large insects, are stonefly larvae. Those and these worm-like creatures that are crane fly larvae rely on a lot of forested land use and input from leaves that fall into the stream. They're what are known as shredders. They shred up these large pieces of leaves. 
very exciting find here today. These are very large stone flies, about three times the size of what we normally see. We rarely encounter them because they are some of the most sensitive organisms and are very intolerant to pollution. They are here because the water quality is high. Well, it's been a great day of stream sampling here in the woods. Had a lot of fun finds on the side and just great benthic macroinvertebrates and great indications that these, this stream here is doing well. Streams in urban areas with more sources of pollution and poor habitat rarely support the kinds of benthics we found here. And that's why it's so important to protect streams like this one. It's a reference stream because it sets the standard to which we can compare other streams we monitor.